Hello and welcome to the Rainmaker Global Market Access event on Can Export Grants for SMEs. I'm Brock Bergen, the Business Development Advisor at Rainmaker, and I'll be your host for this event. With me is Casey McMeekin, our VP of Client Services, and Jitendra Punjabi, our Head of Research and Government Grants. With our team, they handle all the Can Export applications on behalf of our clients. Rainmaker Global Market Access is a new market entry consultancy firm. We help our clients expand their business to new markets, and we are a Trade Commissioner of Canada approved vendor and have a success rate of 100% on qualified applications that we submitted in 2022. The Can Export Grant is through the Government of Canada, and it's for small and medium sized enterprises that help cover up to 50% of costs for Canadian companies that are looking to expand to new international markets. I'll let Casey and Jeet talk more about the details of the grant and application process. They're going to go over exactly what the Can Export Grant is, who qualifies for it, how you apply for it, as well as some tips on writing a successful application. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them into the comments section and we'll answer them before the event is concluded. With that, I'll hand it over to our VP, Casey McMeekin, to explain the Can Export Grant in more detail. Casey? Thank you very much, Brock. Uh, my name is Casey McMeekin, uh, Vice President of Client Services at Rainmaker Global Market Access. Um, in this 20 minute webinar, hopefully um, by the end of it, you'll have some very useful tips that you can take away to write the application on your own. And hopefully you have a very good understanding of the ins and outs of the programs. Of course, the very first thing to contemplate before you decide to embark on the can export SME application process is why should your business be considering export in the first place? And in reality, your business is already operating in a globalized economy. It's very likely that your competitors from out of country are already in your backyard. You're competing with them. Um, so you are already operating in a globalized economy. So you may be missing out on opportunities to exponentially grow your business abroad. So the Can Export SME grant is funding between 10 and $50,000 of matching grant funds for expenses related to research, marketing, and business development activities in markets outside of Canada. Uh, unlike other grant programs, the Can Export SME uh, funding can be used for a very broad spectrum of project expenses. And you can also reapply multiple times for up to a three year period. Let's talk a little bit about can export eligibility key criteria. The first is you must be a for profit organization. You must be incorporated legal entity, a limited liability partnership or a cooperative in Canada. You must have a CRA or Canada Revenue Agency number, which means that you filed your taxes in the last fiscal year. You must have fewer than 500 full time equivalent employees. And in terms of your gross revenue from the past fiscal year, it has to be between 100,000 and 100 million dollars in annual revenue for you to be eligible for can export funding. Let's discuss timelines. The can export SME program follows the federal government fiscal year, which begins on April 1st and ends in March 31st of the following calendar year. You can only apply for funding of activities which take place after the date you submit your application. So this means if you incur certain project expenses um, and then apply for the grant, you cannot, you cannot use the grant funding to get reimbursed for those expenses that you already incurred prior to the, prior to the day that you submitted your application. Additionally, you can only have one active can export project uh, at any given time. This basically means that you have to close off uh, an existing can export project before you can submit a new one for a fresh project. Um, the can export SME program commits to a funding decision within 60 business days. Although in Rainmaker's experience, we have seen quicker decisions um, as quick as four weeks, uh, but typically we're seeing them take almost the full 60 business days to adjudicate uh, the, the can export grant. In terms of eligible target markets, the way that the can export SME program defines a target market is that it must be a country or a sub-national market of 
either the United States, Brazil, China, or India, which means those, so for those four countries, they break up the country into smaller subregions, and you can apply for project expenses to go after those individual regions. And for those markets or those countries to be eligible for you to apply for funding, um, you cannot have had uh, any any more than 10% of your total revenue from the previous fiscal year uh, had come from that particular market. If you have more than 10% of your revenue from that particular market in the last fiscal year, as long as it's under $100,000, then that market still qualifies as an eligible target market. And every single can export project, you can only select a maximum of up to five target markets per project. Let's talk a bit about the types of expenses that are eligible for can export funding. First off, category A and category B, uh, trade shows and travel. Pay for expenses related to traveling to a target market and uh, staying in hotels, paying for taxis in, in the target market. And you can also use the funding to pay for expenses related to trade shows. So whether you're an exhibitor and you want to, uh, you have some expenses related to uh, booth space, you want to pay for some of your marketing costs and collateral at the booth. The Can Export SME program does cover expenses related to that. Uh, category C, marketing and translation. This is for the cost of things such as brochures, making minor changes to your website or translating things from English into say Spanish if you were if you're targeting the Mexican market. So moving on to category D, interpretation services. So this is the, to, to cover the cost of hiring an interpreter in the target market to perhaps attend business meetings alongside you and your sales team uh, to uh, translate into, from whatever language you, in the country that you might be in. Uh, category E is for contractual agreements, intellectual property protection and certification. So say you had to certify your products um, or make sure that your IP is um, is uh, above board in the target market. Category F is con hiring a consultant for business tax and legal advice. Moving on to category G, this is category G is where Rainmakers services fall under, and this is for consultant costs uh, specific to market research, feasibility studies, and identification of key contacts, as well as B two B facilitation. So the way that Rainmaker leverages this particular category of expenses is we conduct feasibility studies, market research, and we do outreach and facilitate meetings between our clients and prospects in the target markets. So next I'm gonna go into a hypothetical project just to give you an example of the breadth of the types of services that you can, that fall under the Can Export program. So in this particular hypothetical program, um, the client XYZ has decided to take a look at New York State and Texas State as potential target markets. In this hypothetical project example, the very first thing that the company wants to do is hire a consulting firm to research the target markets and determine the feasibility of entering the markets for their business. Next, the company will hire a corporate lawyer to assess the company's intellectual property and other certification and registration specific to the New York and Texas markets. Then they want to hire a consulting firm to identify targets in Texas and New York and to perform outreach and B2B facilitation services uh, to introduce your company's sales team to those potential clients. Um, additionally, they will hire a digital consulting firm to advise the business on the creation of an effective e-commerce platform targeting customers in the US. Uh, they also want to attend a trade show in New York City and use the can export uh, funds to pay for booth space at the at the trade show. And of course, in order to get to the trade show, they will apply for funding to pay for their airfare, hotels, taxis, and per diems, such as meals, for up to two, comp two company representatives to travel to New York for seven nights, including the trade show. Also, while they're in New York for the trade show, the company wants to run a series of LinkedIn and Facebook ads targeted to their prospects in, um, in the market, in, in the New York market. Finally, uh, last but not least, 
the this hypothetical company wants to hire an international marketing firm to develop brochures and video advertisements specifically targeting customers in New York and Texas. So in this hypothetical example, the company is planning on incurring uh, $89,500 worth of project expenses and expects to be returned up to $44,750 uh, and reimbursements from CanExport. So moving on to Rainmaker and how Rainmaker does help companies uh, write these applications. In fact, we've worked with over 44 different companies since 2020 to help them apply for CanExport funding. And so far in 2022, we have 100% success rate on all qualified applications that we've submitted for our clients. Rainmaker is also a Trade Commissioner Service approved consulting vendor. We work very closely with the Trade Commissioner Service and the representatives around the world. They offer a very valuable service. It's a free service uh, to help uh, offer some sort of high level market intelligence and some basic level of uh, connections in the target markets. Uh, Rainmaker, we take it a little bit further. We we get a little bit more involved on the actual sales side and the and the B two B facilitation side. In terms of our market research, we do a lot more thorough custom type market research. It's not not as much of a broad market uh, research type service. And one of the ways that we do that is through our subscriptions to uh, research tools and databases, which we spend quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of our budget on every single year to make sure we have. Uh, real-time data on markets, uh, companies in the markets, and industry trends. We consider ourselves to be an end-to-end -end strategic partner for, for clients that are considering can export or considering new market entry, which means that we get involved at the very front end. Uh, if, you're, if you're struggling to identify what markets you think you should be entering, we help with that. We also can help with the, the writing of the grant, as I've said before. Uh, and then our services do fall into the uh, the service offering of Can Export, specifically category G there for hiring a consultant. So we can undertake the market research uh, on behalf of our clients as well as uh, facilitating introductions to prospects in the market. Um, additionally, when we write your application for you, there is an upfront fee, but we provide a hundred percent money back guarantee. So if your application for whatever reason is unsuccessful and it had something to do with uh, the quality of the application, we return your money uh, 100%. Um, with that, I'm going to pass it on to uh, Jitendra Punjabi. He's our head of global research and government grants. Him and his team have been responsible for writing and coordinating uh, almost all of the grants that come through Rainmaker uh, over the past uh, few years. So with that, I'll pass it over to Jitendra. Thank you, Casey. Um, welcome everyone. Um, so uh, uh, I'm the head of research at Rainmaker and uh, pretty much write all the grant applications. Uh, and we're gonna be talking about some tips and tricks of how you can write a successful uh, grant application for CAN Export SME program should you choose to write it on your own. So uh, obviously it's a very comprehensive application. There's around 14 to 15 questions that needs to be answered. The number one point that we, we should keep in mind is that uh, you need to provide all the, the answers and with as much detail as possible. We have come across a, uh, a few clients where, you know, they just very briefly describe the problem uh, situation or a business case. Uh, or you know the rationale behind entering a particular market and they were rejected because there were not enough details built into it. So we recommend that we provide all, as much details as possible across all the questions. Uh, the second point being um, that we we need to back up all the all the objectives that we're trying to achieve with the grant uh, with possible specific data and statistics. So for example, if we are trying to enter into US South, uh, for an oil and gas, uh, you know, sector project, we need to provide some statistics. Like, for example, what's the growth prospect for that particular industry in U.S. South specifically? Uh, what are the specific segments uh, which are aligned with our value proposition, and how are they growing? And what's the growth potential there? Uh, how is the business environment overall? Uh, uh, what are the tax laws? What is the regulatory landscape, et cetera? And why is it conducive? 
for the applicant to enter into that particular market. So we need to provide some specific data points and statistics so that we can uh, justify uh, our decision to go after that market. Uh, number three is like we need to be realistic and elaborate uh, as far as the budgeting is concerned. This is one of the most important sections of the application where a lot of clients tend to go wrong. Casey talked about like there are six different categories uh, of expenses that we can apply for. So we may have to kind of drill delve deeper into all those specific ca categories of expenses that we are planning to apply for. So for example, if you're applying for a travel and trade show budget, we need to provide all the details about the flight, the, uh, the cost of per diem, the cost of food, uh, the booth cost of trade shows, when are we going to travel, what's going to be the duration, what's the flight cost going to be, everything. Uh, and similarly on other categories of expenses like market research, like what, how much time and effort one particular analysis is going to take, hourly rates, what are the specific components of that particular project is going to look like, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, really elaborate budgeting will help uh, writing the good application. Number four point is uh, the focus on the rationale and the outcome, which is something that we call the so what. The element of so what needs to come out very clearly on across all the questions, specifically the outcome. So the client may say that, okay, we are, we are, we are going to enter into a specific market uh, and we're going to do X, Y, Z things. But the so what element needs to be highlighted very clearly that what's going to be the impact on the company's own operations, its own revenues and profitability, and how is it going to translate into the, uh, the economy of Canada, right? And uh, how is it going to have a favorable impact on the overall uh, you know, economy of the country itself. So we need to do the so what analysis across as you know all the all the sections as much as possible. Uh, the last point being, uh, don't be too technical. Uh, at times we see that the clients become very passionate about their products and services, and uh, and that's when it becomes a bit more technical. So the adjudicator, what they're looking at is that how you're trying to explain your complex products and services into a layman term so that they are able to understand it well and they are able to uh, you know, comprehend that which segment you belong to, what kind of services and offerings that you have and how it's gonna be uh, beneficial uh, for the target market and how it really fits into the target market uh, and overall dynamics. And these are some of the five, you know, top five, I would say that uh, the key tips and tricks for a successful application. Uh, the, the other thing that I uh, would like to draw your attention to is that uh, there are around 14 to 15 questions overall, but just to reflect on some of the key questions that you may have to answer just to see that how complex the process is. So for example, explain how in your view there is a strong market potential, uh, how your efforts are being part of coherent international business development strategy, uh, they're looking for the indicators like market research, KPIs, who uh, the local partners and client leads, so what's the regulatory landscape, uh, what kind of challenges are you going to face uh, if you are in trying to enter a specific market. Now those challenges could be, is there a disconnect in terms of business culture, if there is a, a challenge with respect to supply chain operations, tariffs and uh, duties that may have an impact. Uh, and the overall regional stability. Uh, so basically to reflect on how is the external environment, how conducive is the external environment of that particular market which you're trying to enter into, uh, and that requires a lot of research and, uh, and analysis to back it up. Explain your business case by clearly outlining the activities you plan to undertake and how it relates to your company's uh, international business objectives. Uh, they're looking for the specific plans of your company that uh, that you may have to highlight in terms of okay how you're going to get into that particular market what are you going to do exactly and how are you going to achieve your strategic objectives they want to look at uh, your business plan they want to look at your strategic uh, marketing plan uh, they want to look at um, you know basically they want to see uh, if you look at the last line it says explanations provided should be detailed so as to justify the size and the complexity of the project. So what exactly are you going to do with respect to your project, with your no, new market entry, 
all the details they want to really look at uh, so that it justifies the project outline, right? The other point is that uh, uh, outline the key companies that you are that you have identified as potential clients and partners or representatives in each of your markets. So they want to they want to know that are you aware and have you done your homework uh, and have you identified your potential clients, your target customers, your uh, sales representatives, your manufacturing and supply chain partners and any other strategic partners throughout the value chain of your uh, delivery, have you identified and, and, and how confident that you're going to be working with them closely? They want to know uh, everything about that. They also want to know how is your competition looking like in a target market? So what's the lay of the land? How What's your market, what's your market share going to look like in a saturated market? Uh, how many competitors are re- already there? Uh, what's the value proposition of your company versus the others? What are your strengths and weaknesses versus your competition? And um, and this is where it, it, it gets a bit tricky because uh, the client may not really know uh, what the competition is looking like in a different market outside of Canada. And that's where a lot of research and analysis really come uh, handy. Um, uh, so yeah, these are some of the things that can really help you make a uh, impactful and impeccable application uh, with Can Export on to Brock and see if there are any other questions. Thank you very much, Jitendra and Casey. We're going to answer some commonly asked questions about the Can Export grant. Uh, firstly, Casey, can you apply multiple times in the same year? Uh, yes, you can apply multiple times in the same year until you've maxed out your grant for the year, which is uh, $50,000 per fiscal year. However, there's a caveat to that. You cannot have more than one can export project open at once. So you essentially have to close off the previous application before you can apply for a fresh round of can export funding. You can apply multiple times in the same year, but like I said, you just have to close off the uh, the other project before you can start a new one. And can I use it to pay for my internal marketing team to develop a brochure or advertisement campaign in the target market, or do I have to hire externally? Yes, that's that's a question I get all, quite often. Um, uh, unfortunately, you cannot use the Can Export grant to pay for internal expenses, such as uh, the cost of staff and their salaries, and which I know is a little frustrating to a lot of participants in the program because so many companies have internal marketing teams already. Um, but unfortunately, you can only use the Can Export program to pay for external marketing experts to create things like brochures or do edits to your website um, specific to the target market. And how long does it typically take us at Rainmaker to write an application for a client? This is a good question for Jitendra, but I, in, uh, in, in my understanding, um, it usually takes us somewhere between seven to 10 days to write the application, to write a really high quality application for our, for our clients. Um, these are things that we don't like to rush. Uh, as Jitendra kind of pointed out, the more details that you provide, the, the more likely uh, you'll have the success application so um so we do take these quite seriously and they're quite comprehensive so about seven to ten days typically to write one thank you very much everyone for joining us today i hope this was helpful for you this event's been recorded will be posted on our youtube and social channels if you have any more questions about the can export grant or rainmaker and our service offering please feel free to reach out to us all our information is on our social platforms Have an excellent rest of your day and good luck with your international expansion efforts.